yard and we're collecting bees to install in our mini mating nucleus colonies. Uh, we need approximately uh, one frame of bees for each nuke that we're going to be making up. So, and we want to get young bees out of the brood chamber because they'll live a long time in these nucleus colonies and they're, they accept queens well and it's just best to start with young bees. So the first thing we do is we find the queen and cage her, put her in a little cage like this. Uh, we definitely don't want to be shaking the queen out, uh, so we cage her first. And then we pick uh, five frames from each colony to shake bees uh, out of. And we shake them into this bulk bee box that is, uh, has ventilation on the bottom. There's two frames uh, here hanging there with some food on those frames. And then we, this is a funnel up in the top that we shake the bees down into here. And then the bees can hang out in there. And later on, we'll scoop the bees out to add to the nucleus colonies. So let's get started, Dave. We'll uh, grab our five frames from each one. See all the bees there? I like to just leave the frames outside the hive so I can keep a good count of how many we've done from each hive. We're going to do five from each hive. That's pretty much all there is to it, just pulling them out and shaking them off. little stops built into here so we can bang the frames on them. These colonies have a lot of brood in them so they'll very quickly replace the bees that we uh, shake it out. Just hold that frame up there Dave so you can see all that brood that's going to be hatching out to replace these bees. One, two, three, four, five. So we're done with that one. So now these frames can go back in. And we move on to the next hive. So I'd just like to explain uh, how this mini mating nucleus colony is arranged and how, how it functions. Uh, this is the feeder, uh, a trough area there that we can fill up with sugar syrup or candy. There's a queen excluder in between there so the queen can't get into this area because they can build comb in this area and the queen could be laying in there and that would be difficult to find her there. So that's what that queen excluder is for. Then each of these frames is made up in a way that they have no bottom bar and we put a strip of foundation in mm -hmm. and each year we start with, new, with having them build new comb. So we melt these out uh, when we're done with them at the end of the year. So that's the one frame. You can see on that frame we have half of a pheromone strip and you can also see how attractive that is for the bees. So that pheromone strip smells like a queen and it helps to hold the bees inside these nucleus colonies. They have no brood, no comb, no queen and so they're prone to absconding from them. That little strip of queen smell holds the bees in there until they get a queen hatching out. Uh, so we have three frames set up in there like so and the feeder, the queen excluder, the frames. On the front we have ventilation because when we make these nucleus colonies up and we close them they need to be able to breathe but we don't want them to be able to fly. So we have lots of ventilation in here. We set them up and then the following morning we open up the entrance and then they can fly and we've removed that ventilation so they're not getting too chilled at night. So they th then have an entrance hole. On the bottom of the nucleus colony is a slide that pulls up so that we can pour the bees in. So that gives us access to pour the bees in and there's lots of space in there because there's no comb inside the, uh, the box. And when it's in this position here, it has ventilation at the bottom as well, so they have flow through ventilation when we have the entrance closed. Venting here and venting at the bottom of the nucleus as well. So now we'll load them up with bees. 
Okay, so now we're ready to put the bees into the mini nucleus colonies. We have our bulk bee box here with the screen all around. We've brought it back from the other yard and we're going to be scooping bees out of those to add into the nucleus colonies. So I'm going to be scooping the bees out and dumping them in. Dave's going to be closing the nukes up and flipping them over and banging them down to get the bees to the bottom of the box. And then Stephanie is going to be pouring sugar syrup in and then Brooke is going to be putting the cells in after that. Let's go. So we open it up, get it ready to open and then bang it down hard. And then shake the frames, shake the frame, and now spray water in quickly so the bees aren't all flying up. We wet them down like this so they don't fly. And periodically we need to uh, reapply more water. And then we take our scoop and we scoop up the bees. But you can see what they look like in the bottom here. Just a big mass of bees in the bottom. And we'll measure up a cup and a half. There's a cup and a half there. And then we dump them in. And then Dave takes over. Cup and a half. Dave closes those up, bangs them, and then you can see that Stephanie's pouring in the sugar syrup, and then Brooke will be putting in the cell. The goal here is to move along pretty quickly so that we don't have a lot of bees up in the feeder. Uh, and the, who would get drowned with the sugar syrup. So we've, fit, we've loaded the bees up into these nucleus colonies and now we're setting them out into the yard. Uh, we, we leave them in place overnight and then open them up the following morning. But these are in a different location than where we collected the bees from, so they will orient to this new location. Take them over and we set them on to cement blocks and then strap them into place because the raccoons will get in here and tip them and drink the syrup. So if we have them on the cement blocks like that, it gets them up out of the grass so the queens and bees can get in and out quite easily, but the coons can't tip them over to uh, access the syrup. Tomorrow morning we're going to come back, we will pull out this tack, which keeps the, the door shut, we'll move it up and we'll put the pin in place here and that keeps the lid from falling down because they get kind of loose over time. So we would come back tomorrow morning and open these up. That way they gradually fly out and uh, orient to their new location. Two weeks from now we'll come back and we'll go through and find the mated queens, remove them and put another cell in and so these nukes can carry on and we can typically get about five rounds of queens out of each of these nukes. So we're back here after two weeks. Two weeks ago we made up these nukes and we put in a queen cell into each one of them. Those queens have hatched out, flown out and mated, and hopefully uh, started to lay eggs. We're going to harvest the queens at this point and put them in cages so that we can use them in other colonies or sell them. So to, to go through this, what we do is we unstrap the hive. We hold with our thumb on the bottom here and then pull gently up on the lid and then flip that lid over 
beside here, turn the box, and first of all have a look at the queen cell. We can see that the queen has hatched out. She's, it's open at the bottom there, so we're done with that. Then we pry the frames, all three frames, to loosen them up. I like to take this frame out first and look for the queen and there she is. Very often the queen is on this frame and we've got eggs I can see in there. She's a good size. She's motoring around but uh, she's mated and is laying so we can now pick her up and mark her. As we're taking frames out and we, it may be one frame or two frames or even three frames before we find the queen. So we can just lay those frames like that on the lid. Occasionally we find the queen inside the box. So we try to move through these frames quickly and catch the queen while she's still on a frame. If she's inside the box we then have to use our hive tool and play a little bit of hockey with her and just gradually move her towards the top like that so that we can then pick the queen up. But this time we're fortunate we found the queen on the first frame so we'll now mark her. And we'll clip the right wing since it's an even year. I got a little bit of honey on the wings here. There we go, got that separated. And then we're going to put that queen into a cage, like so, and pick out attendants. We're looking for very young looking bees to put in here. And we'll put five attendants in with the queen. You see how I'm covering, my, covering that hole up with my finger and just opening it up enough to pop another bee in there. And we put five in. I've missed a couple, so there we go. And then the next thing we do is put the candy into place. These cages come with uh, candy tubes that we can slip into place here. And there to go. That's all ready to be mailed off to another beekeeper or installed in another colony. So that's how we cage mark and clip our queens. Now if I came to this hive and there was no queen present in the hive, what I would do is uh, add another frame of bees from another nucleus colony and that what we would do is transfer a frame that has eggs and larva on it into this colony so that it's in a more of a, a position that will accept queens and it doesn't lose strength. So we always switch a frame out. We usually switch, or we always switch, the frame that has the pheromone strip on it. Uh, and that's an easy one to identify and, and we know it goes right here. You'll see that the frames that are in this position are shorter because there's a molding in the bottom of the box right below that frame. And so this frame uh, has to go back in that position. This, the, the bigger one won't fit down in. So we always have to put the frames back in the same order. And if we're switching one from one box to another, again we switch the frame that has the queen pheromone strip on it. We have to be careful uh, that when we're closing these up that we get our lid on nice and tight. Uh, we're going to come back in a minute and put in the queen cells. That'll go right in there. Uh, but there's this queen excluder here. If we don't have the lid on tight, a queen could get over that and get into here. And you can see they've built some comb in this area. So she could be laying eggs there. And it's much harder to deal with a queen if she's on this, this comb in the feeder position here. So I always make sure that the lid goes back on nice and tight. But that's a... Uh, a little nuke that's ready to, ins 
put a queen cell in. We go through all the nukes first, find all the queens, cage them, and then we go back afterwards and put the queen cells in. So you'll see that coming right up. So we're ready to put the queen cells in now. We open up the hives and then put the cells in. As you can see, we're keeping the incubator in the shade so it doesn't overheat. But we, when we open that up, we have our cells in here. We keep them vertical and we handle them gently. So Stephanie's going to open up those nukes now. And as she's opening them up, I'll be putting a cell in, like so. So everyone gets a cell. And then as soon as we've got all the cells in, we close the nukes back up. And you'll notice Stephanie is getting those lids nice and tight so that the queen can't get over into the feeder area. Because if there's comb in there, she'll lay eggs on it if she can get in there. So she's closing up nice and tight. And then we'll strap them back down to their, their hive stands. And we'll come back again in two weeks to harvest another round of wheat. So just a little, a little recap of this whole process. We uh, prepare the nucleus boxes with new strips of foundation. We put in the pheromone strips. Then we go out to a bee yard. We collect bees at a different location in a bulk bee box. We bring them back to this location, dump in a cup and a half of bees, fill up the tank with sugar syrup, add a queen cell, and then set them out into place. We open them up the following morning. Two weeks later, we come back and hopefully we have a mated queen in each of these little nucleus colonies. It's very easy to find queens inside these because they're so small. Uh, that's one of the chief advantages. They use very few bees, very few resources, and they're easy to find queens in. I love them.